What's going on everybody and welcome to Drew and Chase side by side. We are coming to you from San Diego, California and I am Drew and I'm Chase and this is a musical podcast where we randomly select a year and we each pick an album from that year and we put them up side by side. We see what we like, dislike, any similarities, differences, any uh, personal connections or personal stories. So, uh, Chase, why don't you get us started? So, the first album is, I think it's the 15th solo 15th, album yep. by um, New York artist Lou Reed. And the album is New York. And then the other one is considered the debut solo album for Tom Petty, which is Full Moon Fever. And that was released in April of 1989 1989 so those are the two albums we uh listened to and uh so chase why don't you get us into the first one yeah so the 15th studio album from lou reed like i i had never listened to this album before and it was kind of everything i needed and wanted all during these crazy times you never heard this one before never Dang, okay. Because I thought you made me listen to this for a specific reason again. No, it was crazy. <clears throat> so I'll, I, we can get into a side story about that later on. Uh, but no, when we were looking at the albums from 89, there were some ones that like I liked and stuff. But yeah. I was like, I, I'm a big fan of like Velvet Underground, the early like glam era, Bowie, Lou Reed stuff. Yeah. Like love that stuff. And then I like some of his stuff in this uh later 70s and a little bit of the early 80s stuff uh-huh. but a lot of his 80s stuff i haven't listened to but something about the cover something about like how dark it looked i was yeah. like i want to i want to check this album out yeah and i was like i just wanted to listen to it. i wasn't like this is going to be the album i'm picking uh-huh. but i played it like i woke up at like four in the morning uh-huh. and listen, i was like this is like everything i want That's and need so right funny. now it's so like obviously political social yeah. um uh, great just sim- simple raw rock and roll songs on there like yeah it's just this like gritty underworld of new york city and it's <clears> like <throat> i i think i read something it's like a twisted love letter to the city of new york you know like it's it's brilliant i mean he does point out the goods and the bad a lot of flaws no of course a lot of the flaws too and just kind of what was going on in the times you know what i mean uh just with their whole government being run and just the whole you know it touches on like the aids epidemic it 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 touches on a lot of things going on um but for me it it didn't do much like to me it didn't do much um music wise it was great i really enjoyed the music the just stripped down there was like a couple songs i feel like were more structured where he got into more sort of a singing even though there was not really any singing yeah on his it, delivery but was, is always just that poetic it is that poetic spoken word type thing and that so i don't it's a mixture of things because i don't necessarily like a lot of politics and social issues in my music i like that separate Mm -hmm. like in other art forms or other things so to go listen to this i was like oh man this is like really tough to listen to and then it being a message that you know needs to be heard obviously especially for the time but i don't necessarily agree with everything that's being stated and I've never really gravitated towards New York music right. and East Coast music. So it was a combination of a lot of things that made it really difficult for me to listen to. I mean, there were a couple standouts, you for know, sure. that I enjoyed, but Yeah, and that's that's what's interesting cuz a lot of people said for like where rock music was at the time, this album related more to like a New York East Coast hip hop album just because it was really a reflection, like a lot of what those hip hop artists were doing, yeah. of their environment. Like Definitely. things, you know, crack, AIDS, yeah. like all these things. He's addressing them and coming from a place of like 
the streets you know like Mm -hmm. he he's always been part of like that underbelly underside of new york with drugs like um you know like transvestites transgenders like all that stuff he's been a part of that culture like for a long time and And very outspoken about yeah for sure but yeah so the first the first two songs definitely kind of what we're touching about i wanted to highlight uh dirty boulevard because i thought that was a pretty powerful song he's talking about like the kid he lives in an abusive household with nine brothers and sisters and like i like the line where he's like no one dreams of being a lawyer here they just dream of dealing on the boulevard you know and it's such like a sad but true concept of just like you you have no ambition that's all you see is like people drug dealing and they're making money and that's all like you aspire to be but then i really like in the end where it's like he found this book of magic and he's like i just want to disappear and fly away from here Mm -hmm. and like for some for what for people the smallest thing can be their escape for in this case it's you know a magic book but like it could be whatever and like just having that little bit of hope and optimism can sometimes get you out of a tough situation and uh, like i really i really thought that was a strong song um a strong one in my eyes was the next one endless cycle i i thought that one you know really just struck a chord with me just you know pointing out kind of childhood traumas and childhood events and how they can kind of impact you and you know really affect you when you're older yeah. and you know the cycle kind of continues it, unless you know you can become aware of that and really focus on getting out of that but for a lot of people this is you know the case yeah. where they just get stuck in that endless cycle so that was kind of the first song and my opinion that kind of really stood out on the album that i really like enjoyed but um yeah what were a couple others that stood out to you big time so last great american whale was another great song i mean it's just a great story i don't know if it's like even like uh some of it's based on a true story or Mm -hmm. not but that's that's what i was telling you so the night before i listened to this album we were watching that um blackfish documentary okay, yeah and like i fell asleep like right as they were talking about like how native americans never really like messed with whales like uh-huh. i mean i think up in like uh alaska and stuff they've they hunted them and stuff yeah but like generally like people realized whales were such smart creatures and like they didn't attack humans they uh native americans weren't gonna attack them mm-hmm. and I was just like, that's like, I went to bed thinking about that. And mm-hmm. then I woke up and heard this song and I was like, this is weird. Like, that is weird. And, and just like how the song touches on that. And obviously it gets into like, you know, um, the political stuff about like the mayor, racist mayor's son and stuff like that. But like, I really like the end of that song where he's like, you know, um, Americans don't care for much these days, you know, like, yeah, you know, land and land in the environment like the least Mm -hmm. and then animal life isn't worth much yeah yeah so like it's just touching on all these things that like i i like believe and it's just crazy this was you know now what 20 plus years ago yeah over almost 30 years 30 years ago Yeah. yeah so and and it's like we're still dealing with similar things and then obviously like you know he talks about some local yokel nra member like yeah. blowing up the whale and stuff and it's just you know a lot of it's just crazy like th- that much time has passed but it's i still, still feel like a lot stuff. of th- the same topics are in the news and like um i mean even in that same song like i believe it was towards the end where it says don't believe half of what you see and none of what you hear. Yeah. It's like, I really like that line yeah. because, I mean, that goes exactly with what's going on today, yeah. you know? Definitely. Yeah, there's a couple couple things. Like, even the song before, There Is No Time. Like, I think that one had a lot of, like, stuff about what's going on kind of now. Like, I don't know. I don't, 
you would just have to listen to it again to like pick out the phrases he uses but like he's just spouting off a bunch of like this is no time for like personal gains and stuff like you know it's I, it's so just was th- this was during a war time right so that that's what that song kind of seemed like hey yeah. this is no time for this 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 like it's time to actually like take action or you know do something that you believe in that one yeah that was a good one i didn't quite fully grasp yeah, and where it's kind of got going that punky. With it. But yeah, like I like the music and all of that, but I didn't quite grasp the message behind mm-hmm. there. This isn't the time, or yeah. whatever, you know, like I didn't quite understand what it was for. But it was still a yeah. It was I liked the concept of it, right? For yeah. sure. And then yeah, busload of faith, another like solid song. Definitely has like um, you know some political social things i mean i like i like how he he says you know you can depend on the worst always happening and he's talking about like you know if a girl gets raped there's not going to be problem getting pregnant but for some people it's so hard to get pregnant you know at times so it's like you can always depend on the worst thing happening at the worst time and then you know he goes in to say like if she aborts it then she's going to get attacked so Mm -hmm. it's like you can't win either way but evil's gonna kind of win the bad's always gonna outweigh the good sort of thing and i mean it's just it's just a true thing not for everything in life obviously but stuff like that happens and i i just think he does a good job um sick of you not i not my biggest not the biggest song on the album for me but still still yeah, good that's what i say i was like i i just wasn't really into this one it seems like he was just kind of talking Ranting about a little upset bit. about news media yeah, and just yeah. yeah that kind of stuff and yeah, yeah sick of you hold on um yeah good good songs um I think this album did run a little long. Oh, yeah. Like, but being that I like the content so much, like, I, I was in pretty engaged every time I listened to it, like, mm-hmm. to the words and stuff. It's definitely one that you want to, like, read along with the lyrics, I feel. Yeah. You don't, like, and I think he said on the album, like, this is like a movie. Like, you want to listen to it all in one go. You mm-hmm. don't want to, like, just kind of, jump in and out of it yeah um then yeah th- good evening mr waldenheim that's an interesting um one too because he's like you know he's calling out a lot of people and i obviously i wasn't born when this came out and i don't really i had to look up all the names and stuff of the people going on but it seems like it's talking about you know like someone being like related to like nazi germany and power or something Mm -hmm. and then he's talking about like jesse jackson like talking about common ground but then was like making like anti-semitic remarks but was fighting for like civil rights and stuff and it's like so he's like does this include me or like is it all just like everyone's personal agenda Mm -hmm. and no one's really like fighting for a common ground for everyone yeah yeah, that one, that one was a little interesting. Was that the one where they mentioned Trumps? Yeah, the Trumps got the mumps, and, yeah. or they got ordained. And See, the, yeah. dude, I I thought you were already familiar I, with this album, and I was like, man, I didn't know that? what that was about. Like, is that a true thing? <laughs> like, I don't know about that, but, but obviously, Trumps in New York City have yeah, been probably, like, yeah, his dad or something have like that, been, assuming, you know, but, a a giant figure. Yeah. For sure. And then, yeah, the last one I'll touch on, Christmas in February. It's like a Vietnam, you yeah. know, anti-war song. I thought kinda. that was a standout one. <laughs> yeah, good storytelling, good, like, uh, you know, kind of message behind it. And then the what the album closes out on, didn't do a lot for me, to be honest. Uh-huh. Time Story Mystery. Me but, either. But Straw Man. Loved Straw Man. And, I again, I wasn't familiar with that term. I guess it's mm. like a tactic used for arguing or something it's like you can like put up like a fake argument that's willing to be like 
broken down easy so then you can kind of come back in Mm -hmm. and it kind of just means like someone that doesn't have a lot of like moral integrity kind of thing but like yeah he's talking about you know all the you know does anyone need all these things like when there's so many people that have so little like who needs a sixty thousand dollar car like who yeah yeah, do we do we need another billion dollar rocket blowing up like Mm -hmm. all these things where he's like again a lot of it is his opinion on things that's what i was gonna say i'm like how some people yes yeah exactly what i mean but like yeah and it's just a reflection of his outlook yeah. on the world and yeah you know like yeah you don't have to love every right. word he's yeah. saying but like he's an artist and exactly. that's what he he was called to do yeah and i think he does it really well because he you know 30 years later now it still like resonates with someone like me it's mm-hmm. there's still a lot of like similarities of what's going on today and i just yeah, yeah i really like Like I said, when I heard it, I'm like, this is definitely going to be one of those albums that is going to stick with me forever now. Like, I'm always going to come back to it. And this was like the first one of, you know, this series we've been doing that, like, I I had never listened to before that I'm like, it's like, yeah, going to stick with me for sure. That's hilarious. And I'm here like, this is the worst (laughs) one you've made me listen to. Which that's just that's yeah. You're hilarious. never putting this one. Up again. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. But I will say before we move on, uh, I didn't want to pass this one along because I did enjoy this one and the concept of a beginning of a great adventure. I like the sound of it, the feel of it. Yeah, it's I got liked that how jazzy. he. Yeah, and it was just you know talking about becoming a parent, the doubts, the worries, but mm-hmm. also kind of having that hope that it's gonna be the start to something great you yeah know? yeah he's definitely playing both sides well in that song yeah. because he's like it, maybe it's not good to try and like mortalize yourself like yeah. you know or like i'm gonna i'm gonna have all these kids to carry my casket to the grave like that's a <laughs> only a lou reed thought yeah. I, I like uh but and then he's like you know i'll try and like teach them all the things that i want to teach them mm-hmm. you know and it, which is kind of suffocating like yeah. you know you want your kids to develop their own identities yeah. but you can try and obviously teach them like yeah. some basic groundwork but yeah definitely i i like that one too um yeah there was only like the the couple on the album that were like still good songs but just like not yeah. not as strong as some of the other ones for sure yeah um man there was another something i was gonna say say but uh i guess we can just move on if i remember we Mm -hmm. can get back to it but um so then uh i chose uh tom petty full moon fever which was like chase mentioned um his solo album uh released in april and uh it's it was basically so, like a greatest hits man <laughs> there's so many hits on it it's man. crazy yeah it um just right up it, just the contrast of music and the feel and the vibe and it's that, like yeah i wanted to i wanted to do that at the end but i'll touch on it right here it's like such a classic east coast west coast definitely, even though tom yeah. petty's like uh from florida and you know he that's southeast whatever but this album was done in LA, in LA yeah. and it's so sunny and oh, laid yeah. back and bright. Such a contrast yeah. from the dark, gritty oh, winter yeah. New York vibe. Yeah, <laughs> so, I think yeah. it was funny because I think when I initially threw these on, I did Tom Petty's first and Lou Reed's. And then the second time I had to do Lou Reed's first yeah. and then go you need into the sunshine this. After yeah, it this. was yeah uh starting out man free fall and just right out the gate yeah. it's like everybody recognizes it it's that you know the to me it melody. sounds like he's just describing life in the city of la and what's going on the people you'll run into and yeah you know. it's like a that song's like a love letter to the city of los angeles and i do like the contrast of the chorus yeah i'm free so yeah i'm free 
but I'm free falling, yep. so I'm also out of control as yeah. well and have no control. So I, I like that one. And then it goes straight into I Won't Back Down. It's like another one that's just so recognizable. Yeah, and Tom Petty's, like, both both albums are simple. Like, you yeah. know, in kind of, like... Stick to a formula. Like, Tom Petty's, the, like, one of the great greatest of all time to do that. Like, he's not super, like... I don't know, technical and flashy and stuff. Like he just uses like simple progressions and just builds like great melodies off of it. And yeah. they're so catchy, like always just like they just stick in your head for the rest of the day when you like when you hear these songs. Yeah, it's exactly. So I found myself singing like both of those like multiple mm-hmm. times. Yeah, definitely. Um, One that didn't do much for me there was a couple um you're so bad it just really didn't do see i love much. that one i think that's another catchy one it was super like, catchy for just sure the guitar work and all yeah just the jangly kind of like but yeah um what what was the other one? Oh, and then uh the other one was a mind with a heart of its own yeah both of those just yeah just so that one i just really i guess didn't grasp it or understand it um and then yeah, you're so bad. It just it just didn't really do much for me. But overall, I mean, the album was though even in those songs that they weren't yeah, bad. You right. know what I mean? It just wasn't strong suits in my opinion. Um, but the whole album just felt really good and strong and consistent. And uh, yeah, like I said, just the start of the album with those two back to back hits. It's yeah. just like just amazing. Yeah, and then even the third song, um, Love is a Long Road, excuse me, um, that one even, like, just has that big, like, it's got this synth, and it's definitely got that, like, a little overproduced vibe, which it's got the, it's Jeff Lynn from ELO who helped co-produce it or whatever, and it's mm-hmm. definitely his sound on that, on that song. Yeah. Like, you can definitely hear, like, how it's like orchestrated and all the synths coming in and out and stuff um but even that song still like just like the guitar like how big it gets and just like sounds so mad like i just hear that song in a stadium setting kind of yeah thing for so sure so with that song uh i just wanted to ask you because initially listening to it i thought it was about like a relationship but is it about drinking because there's that line it says I would wake up at noon, yeah, with my head spinning round. I'd wait for the moon and give her one more chance to try and save my soul. That's interesting. I, You know what I I mean? I don't know if Petty was, like, a big drinker. Okay. I don't think he... I think he did, like, early on in his career. I think he partied. But you can see how I would equate that, right? But from what I know, like, he was mainly, like, a... smoked cigarettes and like probably smoked weed wasn't a struggle from what i don't think so no because yeah that just kind of was a standout little section to me that made me think it could be talking about something else more of like a metaphor type way yeah yeah i just said drinking because i don't know if you know if that's what yeah. he was into or if it was drugs or what it was but i thought that line just kind of stood out where it's like you know i'd wake up at noon with my yeah. head spinning and then wait for the moon and then give her one more chance that's where it's like yeah i don't know i don't know but i did think that was kind of a standout thing it, it stood out to me anyway yeah definitely yeah um yeah there's a really cool documentary it's like three and a half four hours long on him and kind of his whole career and stuff and uh yeah i'm pretty sure like i think like in the 80s like most musicians and stuff i think like he did some but i just don't think he ever like yeah struggled Struggled with addiction yeah at so much and what's crazy is this album like he was dealing with like um his house had just burned down i did hear that or read that yeah so like it, which is crazy because it's like you know i think in one of the songs he kind of says like oh yeah it's and i won't back down the world keeps pushing me around yeah like all these things keep happening and you know you got to just face them and kind of own up and keep keep fighting back and stuff which is obviously just a great 
motto for yeah, life. Like, love, don't let. I things... love that message. That's why I love that song. It, it, I mean, it's catchy. It's kind of simple, but yeah, it has just that such great message that anybody can kind of take and carry with them. Um, a song that I thought kind of really stood out. Another one that was kind of unique in my opinion to the album was "All Right for Now." I just thought that kind of had a completely different feel from the rest mm-hmm. of the album and yeah. it just made it stand out and um yeah it's a really simple kind of short simple. song yeah. yeah and i i liked it like it wasn't anything you know masterful or anything like that i'm just pointing it out because it stood out because it sounded so different from the rest of the album yeah and and then the how the album closes zombie zoo i like that one yeah i mean it's it's kind of interesting because it's like it almost makes him sound like like he's i mean obviously at this point he's approaching his like you know middle age kind of mm-hmm. time so he's like what are these like kids doing like that's like, funny yeah. like wearing makeup staying out all night like yeah. it, like just kind of it's just funny but it that definitely remind that song reminds me of la for sure like the nightlife kind of like oh yeah goth punk like club scene sort of thing and so it's just it's just funny because he's like just reflecting on that and it's cool because i think i think there was an actual club called the zombie zoo too oh interesting and then yeah he's like it's also they look like zombies there so it's kind of like yeah it's kind of like a double a double um meaning sort of thing which is cool like um which yeah it's like he's just taking a simple thing and making a great song out of it which is just you know what the greats can do like just capture something yeah i thought it was a a good ending of it as well just to kind of contrast but bring it full circle with free fall and Mm -hmm. kind of describing the whole scene and everything like that and then also you know kind of tying it back in at the final um ending thing but yeah and it went really quick this album was pretty short yeah and uh yeah it yeah it just went really smooth i i really enjoyed this one like you said it was basically like a greatest hits yeah we didn't even touch on running down a dream oh yeah another great one right yeah, there. yeah yeah another big hit for sure yeah he just yeah for and in the movie i watched um about him he he like mentioned something why it was kind of a solo album because i think most of the heartbreakers still played on it yeah that's with some other featured musicians and stuff but it's still like it doesn't sound really any different Uh maybe it's a little like more laid back than a heartbreakers record might be um but and then they do do the like birds cover um feel a whole lot better um which they probably wouldn't have done if it was like uh tom petty and the heartbreakers record yeah but um yeah like so it's maybe just a little bit more laid back but i read something like or i when i was watching that one of the members I think it was the drummer who doesn't play on the album was like, I don't like this new direction mm. and sound you're going for. And it was the song Free Fallen. Oh my gosh. Like, you <laughs> didn't play on what became his biggest, the biggest song. thing. <laughs> it's That's just hilarious. Like, and it's Some like, to people me, just don't, don't, you know. It, to me, it just doesn't sound like it's not Tom Petty. Like it all said, like Tom Petty's like one of my favorites. Like I have most of his records. Yeah. And it's just like, uh, his solo stuff the heartbreaker stuff it all even like the traveling wilbury stuff that he sings on it's like it's all tom petty to me like it's yeah. all like he just has his style and his sound and it's just always great yeah i mean i didn't know i mean obviously just hearing these hits on the radio that's kind of my exposure of him mm-hmm. um but yeah this was a great kind of introduction into a full body of work Mm -hmm. of his i mean yeah you can't can't go wrong with the start of this album and then yeah it just continues to be strong all the way through so Mm -hmm. um yeah for me um it it went from one of 
my least favorite albums that we've done so far to one of the strongest in my opinion and yeah. uh yeah it's just funny the contrast the east coast the west coast the you know the spoken word to the more like formulaic yeah. <laughs> sound and and honestly i i don't think too many people would argue but both of them are two of the greatest american songwriters like ever so it's it's kind of yeah. cool that you got to put them two side by side even though the albums themselves don't really have a lot of similarities yeah but i mean lou reed started in the early 60s and mm -hmm. then did the whole velvet underground thing and you know tom petty started more in the i think later 60s early 70s with his first band and then you know the heartbreakers kind of took off in like the middle to late 70s and both of them have just like to release in my opinion obviously both released such great albums in 1989 like this far into their career yeah. both kind of like revitalized their career both kind of like set them on another like and unfortunately they both passed away now mm -hmm. but both kind of like launched them back into like uh like a new rejuvenated career like yeah it's funny a lot of people like struggled in the 80s like like the ones from the 60s and 70s good artists like it, finding a going with yeah, the new direction bob dylan was another one it yeah. wasn't till like the 90s kind of like later in the 90s that mm -hmm. kind of revitalized his career so it's yeah just trying not to like follow the trends in the times of the time being yeah. authentic yeah. but then wanting to experiment and break out it like yeah. so yeah and i think they both did it really well here and um yeah i want to check out the next lou reed after album after this because i think that one's more about like a a close friend that passed away so i'm sure it's okay. going to be really dark well i wanted uh, so i did remember just as we were wrapping up here of what i wanted to say on that lou reed thing um it had to deal with dime store mystery do you know who that was about no andy warhol okay. so i'm wondering if that next album is that has something to do with that yeah, yeah for because sure because they were really good friends I, I think he said i think that's Andy what Warhol it is. is his mentor or whatever yeah. so i wouldn't be surprised if that's what it was and yeah i'm glad i kind of remembered that and then you mentioned that because it kind of all triggered it but yeah i wanted to bring that up um yeah it it wasn't the strongest ending to an album but then i kind of looked into kind of what it was about and it was that so i kind of wanted to make note of that gotcha yeah that's cool yeah i think i read something that yeah john kale and and lou reed which is the other guitar player from velvet underground i think they did the next album together and it gotcha. is kind of a tribute to warhol so yeah. and then i think probably another close friend passed away to that so it's kind of like a yeah, I think it's going to be really dark, but yeah. I, I love Lou what, Reed. So. What else do you expect from yeah, him? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, all right, I think that will do it. We are going to figure out another year now. And um, until next time, everybody, peace.